Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you one step that you can take to solve two issues that could be resulting from your tomatoes. So the first thing is going to be any diseases um, that your tomatoes could possibly get in the growing season. Um, I'd say the most common thing that you probably would see in your tomatoes would be tomato blight. Um, and the biggest reason why you would see diseases from your tomatoes would be that the leaves are too close to the ground. Um, especially if they're touching the ground, then that would be probably the biggest issue. But even them just being really close to the ground, that can cause the issue as well. And then the second solution, or second thing that this can help with, would be if you have tomatoes, which I don't know if you can really see some of them in here, um, but if you have tomatoes, if they are not ripening. Because a lot of times you might see tomatoes that stay green for a little while and they're on the plant for a few weeks or so. Um, they're not really growing in size, but they're not turning red either. So this will solve those two issues. Um, like I said, it's very simple and all you really have to do is just trim on your plant. I want to say one other kind of disclaimer or whatever before I um, show you what to do, um, just so that way you know that you're doing this to the right types of tomato plants. So the way that tomato plants grow is there's three types. There's determinate tomatoes, semi-determinate tomatoes, and indeterminate tomatoes. So if you think about what those names mean, I can kind of give you, give you an idea for how the plant grows. Um, so determinate tomatoes mean that they have a determined size and fruit set on them. Um, so they're only going to grow to be a certain size. And a lot of times you'll see those as like patio type tomatoes. They get maybe like three to four feet tall. Um, and like I said, they have a determined amount of fruit. Um, then there's semi-determinates, which are, they're kind of like in the middle of those two. Um, they're somewhat determined, but they can still get to be a certain size. You have a little more room to play with when it comes to pruning them and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's indeterminate tomatoes, which they're the type of tomato that really just grows until they can't. Um, and so a lot of times, like I know I've watched a couple videos online of people that do single staking methods um, where they just have one main leader on the tomato plant and those tomatoes can get like 10 feet tall by the end of the season. Um, you can only do that with uh, indeterminate tomatoes. You can't do that with the t uh, determinates or semi-determinates. Um, now, what I have in front of me, um, if you're familiar with the brand Proven Winners, um, I kind of have the tags here. I have the three different, well, I have three, I think they have like five different types of tomatoes. Um, but that's what I'm growing this season. So I have um, on this side, and they're all kind of grown together, but I have Garden Treasures, Good Hearted, and then Garden Gems. So there are three different types of tomatoes, but the two on the ends are more of a semi-determinate, and the other ones in the middle, which probably isn't the best spot to put them, they're um, definitely a determinate and like a really, really small tomato. Um, but with determinates and semi-determinates, you don't want to prune on them too, too much. Um, you don't want a single stem, like I said. You more just want to um, just prune how I'm going to show you today um, to get rid of any of those issues. All right, so I have this tomato plant right on the corner. This is one of the garden treasures. So this is like a large slicer tomato, um, but it's still a semi-determinate tomato. And I also will add that I did prune these about probably two, three weeks ago at this point. So um, it's best to do this every couple of weeks or so. Um, but even if you haven't done it so far in the season, any time is, is better off to start. Um, so these are probably in a little bit better condition than you might see some other tomatoes, um, but they still can use some work. So you can see the bottom of it here, and all you really want to do is anything that's really close to the ground, you want to cut those. Um, so like you could see like a branch like this, you can kind of just cut them back. And I'm just using regular pruners, by the way. Um, and all you want to do is just take off the leaves. So things like tomato blight and other diseases that tomatoes are susceptible to, they can get them from the soil. That's where a lot of those diseases are kept in. Um, and so when the leaves make contact with the ground or when you're watering your tomato plants and the water splashes up from the ground and it gets a little bit of soil on the leaves or something like somewhat similar of a situation to that, 
um, that's when the tomatoes can start getting that disease and then having issues. So the more that you can like get rid of that issue and prevent it from even happening, the less of a chance that the tomatoes are going to have that disease. Now for the second part, if you see these tomatoes down here, these are somewhat of like a Roma sized tomato um, or like a plum tomato that are growing over here. Um, they're just getting started. I don't actually have too, too many tomatoes at this point, um, but it's better off to do this earlier rather than later. Um, but you can see that they're somewhat covered. They do still get a pre uh, pretty decent amount of sun. But with tomatoes like these, to make sure that they're going to ripen up, if you just cut away some of the leaves right around, not cutting too much, but just a little bit so that way they get a little bit more sunlight, like you could also see back here, I could get rid of some, it'll help give more light to the plants. And then that will ultimately let them ripen better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prune the rest of these tomato plants, just so that way I think they'll be good for the next few weeks or so, and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. and then I also staked them up a bit more. I didn't do it in the best way and I would recommend that if you are growing determinate or semi-determinate tomatoes that a cage is definitely better than the bamboo stakes but I planted them really close together this year without really realizing it um, and so I just couldn't fit stakes for all the tomatoes. Um, one thing I will add also is that tomatoes will do better disease-wise um, and even fruit wise too if they have more airflow throughout the plants because you can see how, how it's a little bit of like dense foliage So if you prune a little bit of that out too, kind of like what I did today um, That also will definitely help with disease the more airflow that they get the better um, But you could see at the bottom you can see all the stems That's ultimately what you want is to be able to see the bottom of the plants I was a little bit lighter on the pruning when it came to the um, the baby tomatoes Just because um, they don't want to be pruned on as much because they're supposed to stay really really compact um, but this goes um, still even for those, but especially for the more like regular growing tomatoes. Um, you can see they're nice and pruned. You can almost see throughout the other end too. And that's how you could tell that they're pruned really, really well. You can kind of see the same thing here. See how there's no leaves that are super, there's a couple leaves that are still really close to the bottom, but um, those I can clean up individually, just going back after it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as long as you take proper care and kind of tame these plants, then you shouldn't have too much of an issue with disease and also with the tomatoes um, not ripening. Like you can even see all these little um, cherry tomatoes. You can see all of them really well now and you can tell that they're getting um, a good amount of sun. So that's pretty much all I have for this video for today. Um, if you have any other questions relating to um, growing, staking up the tomatoes, anything like that, um, feel free to let me know. Um, again, this, def this definitely still goes for um, indeterminate tomatoes as well, um, but I would recommend single staking them. Um, and I'll link a video down below from uh, MI Gardener, who I originally learned that from with single staking, if you are interested in that as well. Um, but you could do the same exact process, just you would only really have one main stem at the bottom, so it's actually a little bit easier to take care of. Um, besides that, I hope you guys like this video, and I will see you in the next one.